And good day. This is the Eye of the Storm podcast with the big picture technical update for the NASDAQ 100 being recorded on Saturday, April the 13th, 2024. Uh, as I mentioned within the uh, S&P 500 update that I've just posted, uh, I have read that Iran has um, sent drones in towards Israel or has fired drones off towards Israel. I have not read that any of, any of them have reached any targets. Uh, there's just been a lot of posturing and we shall see what the reaction will be. But as I said on the uh, uh, S&P 500 uh, podcast, that this has been a geopolitical situation that I've been keeping an eye on, that we've all been keeping an eye on, and now it is in motion. So the initial reaction was that Bitcoin and other cryptos took a real little hit on the chin there, so to speak, but have now recovered some, and not really sure if they're continuing to recover or if they are uh, going to continue to drop. So... I think that, um, well, that we will see basically what's going to be happening. I think the initial again is that uh, Bitcoin and other cryptos have gone down and I have taken a look, quick look at gold, which is trading cash market. And there have been a, there's been a gigantic spike Um and this shows all the way up to 3,100. And I don't know if that was like somebody needing to just getting totally blown out. Uh, but the market is back down at 2432 to 2430, 2430 to 2432. Um, again, that is um, not the futures, but it is the futures trading somewhere. Um, or the price, cash. Anyway, here in the NASDAQ, this is how I see, this is exactly how the market was left on Friday after Friday expiration. And this is after we saw incredible volatility come in on the CPI number. And we saw that bought up and then we saw the PPI come out, get a little bit of a downtick and then nothing but upticks from there until uh, Thursday's close. Friday saw a reversal of all of that and saw a big reversal. In fact, then the NDX gapped, gapped on Friday morning. So, and then everything got reversed with the market heading all the way back down. So how does this come in? Here on the cash market, at last I left it, was that the highs for primary way B were in and that we were starting on the downside. And I know I presented the opposite in the S&P, but again, I'm going to show you both here in the NASDAQ. I left it this way in the NASDAQ primarily because of it being the weaker link. And here is where I will show you uh, wave three and wave four. So let's start with the cash market where I had already marked up that the B wave was done. The primary B wave is done. So let's open this up and let's take a look inside. And that what we had was one, two, three, four, five, right, minute. And they were basically, there was it for, it was a diagonal, not the prettiest of diagonals, but a diagonal nonetheless. And then we started down. So off of that high in the cash market, which was 18,464, almost 465. And then what we got was, or now coming off, is being counted as one, two, one, two. I'm going to bring that down to the hourly chart. So one, two, one, two. What that suggests, of course, is that see what we've got? There was the cash, and then we just, this was Friday. So this just got totally reversed and almost totally wiped away. And so the expectation would be being one, two, one, two, we're now dropping in the third. So it's one, two, one, two, three, four, five of three, four, five of again, that first leg down of the minute. 
excuse me, of the minuet to produce the first wave of minute degree coming off. Now, I believe, you know, we've got for wave three on, on the sub minuet level, well, you've got 100% at 17,851. This is the cash. 1.618 at 17,551. We have 1.618 for the minuet wave three, which we know would not going to work at 17,016 or 17,614. So you're looking at 2.618, which is 17,151 on the minuet level. Right? One, two, one, two. Uh, now, that would be, it's like, if everything responds as it kind of looks like it is, um, then it could be really, really, really interesting. And be, because the other side of this coin is that it doesn't go down, it goes up. Maybe a little bit more down, complete, which would be a minute wave four, and then it goes up, and these all get counted out very differently. So... Now, looking at the hourly, I'm going to actually go out and look at the daily in terms of where the moving averages are. And you can see that the 4 and the 20 are actually sitting on top of one another and have now been crossed. And the 50 is next up. And the 50 right now is sitting at, let me put this down here, 17,870, just below. And so a break there starts to really fill in some gaps we don't want. And here is the, I should put in as the no fly zone or the no go zone. And that's going to be that low, which is 17,319. So if it starts to break below 17,319 with some force, like who cares about that level? We're just going to continue to go. That's going to be a really strong signal that this is actually just one, two, one, two, and we're now in those thirds, and they're really going to go. So it's kind of like would produce a very ugly situation, I think, with the market. Much harder than what we already saw last week in this third. And the outside or the other side of that coin is actually on the NASDAQ, on the futures market, excuse me, on the future. And here again, so we have the A and the B, and now we're in the C wave, still intermediate wave C, still have yet to finish. And I think I got that all above there. Nope, I don't. But looking for the, the five and the five up here somewhere, right? And so we're looking at this thing. Let me put it back on the four-hour chart. And we're still kind of dealing with the expanding diagonal. And so we have still the C wave, the primary B wave, and then we have one, two, three, four. In terms of these, I was playing around and I forgot to take these off. Actually, they go along with the internals for this. So we have one, two, three, four, and we're in that fifth wave. Let me open this up. And within this expanding triangle, we have waves one. There is the minute one, minute two, minute three, minute four. But that would suggest that the four is complete and would be over here so the four is complete at the a low from the 11th right and then we went up and then we came back down now that's the way it was left so you would have to count this as a of five b of five right so that was a five waves up this was three down maybe and then we'd get a c wave that's going to take the market higher now, if gold really went to $3,100 or even went up to twenty-five dollars or $2,600 and is now plunging its way back lower, that's pretty incredible, pretty incredible. So that will be an interesting opening for tomorrow, right? How the bonds then open. If the bonds are going to fly higher, then it's going to be the market is somehow perceiving that interest rates were really going to be cut. And that just really doesn't fit with what's happening. So considering what we might consider seeing, that would be a strengthening in the dollar. Will the dollar pop to 108? Will the dollar pop even higher? Again, not knowing what the demand will be, not knowing what is really going to shake and rattle what market and what will be in demand. 
So one thing I don't believe will be in demand will be equities. And if that's the case, then then we will see this continuation. And that's when these numbers in terms of the do not cross line, here it's going to come much sooner. We basically have a trend line that where we are right now breaks at 18,103. And then we have 18,088, which is a low, but more importantly would be the 18,050 area. So 18,050 would be the what to watch for on if this thing really starts to collapse on the downside. And considering that we closed at what? Uh, 18,172 on Friday. To open down below 18,050, mm, you know, it's just, but if it closes down, if it opens down, 125 points were there, basically, okay? So, and could it do that? Yeah, it could. It could, depends on what, what really rattles it. And where the and there will be fear as to what the market reactions will be and or what comes next. So a lot of unknowns, right? So we have that. If though that between overnight tonight and tomorrow, we get a cleaner view of what is or isn't going to take place in the Middle East then that might bring a little bit more calm and we might end up on change or just a little bit lower waiting still for additional um, information, evidence of how to move forward. So let's take a look again, I got both sides in the futures market. Even if we had a little bit more, an additional break pretty much below where we are will break the count. That's in my opinion. Can we stretch this thing out uh, additionally, we probably could. And this this would, you know, we'd have to, I'd have to recount this because this would be an ABC. And that is only putting it at a triple. So it has to become something else. And that would be a WXY. And then this is a Z. And then this is an X. And we do it again. Again, I'm not sure on how that works within the WXYZ type of moves. Are we able to have two of them? Are we able, you know, do they come and mix and match? <laughs> so again, uh, I hate to be so glib about it, but once I've not done a quadruple ABC, we've never really gotten past triple. So if this was a triple to this level, then you have to kind of go like, okay, well, what comes next? It should rally. If it doesn't, really, what is the market telling me? The five goes down, and this really does become one, two, one, two, and this is even weirder. See, the future, we got that all the way over there. You already saw the cash market. So this is the big difference. We have the cash market, which you can see would be one, two, one, two. We didn't have all that fluff in there. I just opened it. That number was already out. The market had already started lower. And so it's much cleaner. So which one do we want to look at? The market can go down. The future can break, folks. The cash market is telling us one story. The futures market is giving still odds on both sides. But... It's this, the, so the Monday opening is really what's going to matter is to, so we got to hold another couple of days before we, we know what any reaction, how that's going to all fit in. So back at the future. I'm not sure how I would count it if we continued and we started to break down and if it was still going to be in a corrective posture with a rally yet to come. So it could still go down, break, the five goes here, and this then all starts to count out as one, two, one, two. All right? One, two, one, A, B, C, two. And then we start to collapse again. So do you follow me? One, two, one, ABC, two, 
and then we just start to go down. So this is going to be pretty wild because it we shouldn't have a period of uncertainty. Now, the worst thing that can happen is tomorrow is we get we get the opening in the Globex session and it kind of goes like this. Down a little bit and then just sideways waiting. It's like, wow. I, that I really would not be expecting, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, in terms of technically, this has been the weaker link. So I am more than likely going to, that's why I'm presenting both counts in the NASDAQ, because I do really think that it's going to be this one. And I think that this starts to break. This is already set up that it could. Right? Not a strong, but, a, but enough of a new high. It needs to go up just a tad, up to that high at 64. All right, let me just change this around just a tad, see if I can't get that to, I don't want to need to edit, activate. And we'll go up a little bit there, there. All right, so just a little bit of a change. So this is where I think if we start to gap on Monday, we're going to end up, depending on how severe all of it is and how severe they want to take it. So I think that we could come in now. Moving averages. The, on the four-hour chart in the cash market, check it out. The 13, the 20, and the 50 are all grouped together. The 50 is still pretty flat, but angling ever so slightly. These will go very quickly if the market gaps lower from here. And unlikely the 200, which is sitting at 17,679. Mm. What's going to give us a real big hint is if the market gaps down below 17,000, what was that low? 17,875. If it gaps below that, mm -mm, it's going to give us a clearer sign that this remains intact and we're dropping in a third. And here are your measures. Here are your moves on where they could go. I would not be looking for a minute, or excuse me, minuet wave three to come in here when a sub minuet wave three was due in between them. So there'd be a four and a five on this degree before this would finish. So this is more likely the area for the minuet wave three. And then we still have a four and a five to finish minute wave one. So it could be, could be, and we'll see. And that just projects it, that the C wave is, excuse me, the primary B wave is done. We're going to drop in a primary C wave. Um, but we cannot, and I'm just telling you, and not that I, I'm trying to remain neutral and not show my emotions, and, the, and I will not say cannot happen. I, I am looking to see what kind of reaction will be had and I want to be able to trade in either direction. So my goal for Monday is not to place judgment on anything that's happening outside of the market or even any response from within the market. You know, I, I of course, I'm keeping an eye on what's happening in the news, what's happening in the Middle East uh, for signs of acceleration. But at the same time, if your goal is to make money and your goal is to really trade around your positions, well, then you you want to be able to um, keep it all going. And that would mean you trade on Monday. You trade what, what comes in front of you. And if you need to, to, yeah, there could be positions that need to be adjusted, et cetera, et cetera. So trading is going to be pretty much mandatory for a lot of people. And as a day trader, I want to be prepared to take either side could change in five minutes, could change in an hour. That's true. So again, tomorrow's opening. We have our markers, again, below below 18,050, which was that low. Let me just tell you, in the, in the futures market, it was 18,051.50. So let's just say a break below 18,050, and where this trend line is 18,030, I will give it to the trend line, but that trend line's way up here. 
they really start to break, then this is all done. And this is just one, two, one, two, one, two, and get out of the water. It's a shark attack. Get out of the water. And I would expect the market to, to kind of go pretty quickly. Because it is, again, it in my view, it's not that any of these companies are bad. It's how much people want to value them. And then a lot of times it has nothing to do with that either. It has to do with the options flows. It has to do with premium. It has to do with you know, where you're able to sell one and where you're able to buy the other. And that's called making money. So in any case, this is the situation in the big picture in the technical update. There's not really much to be, to, to be carrying on about because as the market was left on Friday, both sides remain absolutely intact and still capable of either side picking up and, and following through starting tomorrow in Globex in the futures market. I'm going to leave it there again. Uh, let me just go over uh, for this particular market, uh, for, the, for the NASDAQ, because I already did it on the S&P, that on Monday, April the 15th, we have one, two, three uh, Fed uh, folks out speaking, uh, uh, Fed President John Williams is making a TV appearance, okie doke. Uh, but at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, Empire State Manufacturing and U.S. Retail Sales. And then at 10 a.m., we have Business Inventories and Home Builder Confidence Index. On Tuesday at 8.30 a.m., Housing Starts and Building Permits. And then we have one, two, including the vice Fed Vice Chair and the Fed Chair are out speaking. But uh, economically or data-wise, we have housing starts at 8.30 a.m., 9.15, industrial production and capacity utilization. Wednesday, Fed Beige Book, plus a couple of uh, Fed people out talking. And then Thursday, initial jobless claims, Philly Fed manufacturing. Um, those uh, 8.30 a.m. initial jobless, 8.30 a.m. Philly Fed, um, 10 a.m. existing home sales, and U.S. leading economic indicators are on Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern. And then we have one, two, three, four fit people out talking. There's nothing due out on Friday. I am going to leave it there. The next Elliott Wave update will be on Monday, uh, unless we get something dramatically outside of what I've talked about here. Uh, the next Elliott Wave update will be on Monday, April the 15th. <laughs>